Just go outside and see what it looks like. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another video. Today we've got my M3 in the workshop. I'm gonna put some red and blue flashing lights and a siren on it. And I'm just gonna do a step by step how I would do it. I've bought the cheapest possible uh, siren and um, uh, flashing red and blue lights I could off of eBay. So just to show you guys that it's not very expensive to buy the parts, it's just a fitting really. It's been stage two tuned by MSL Performance up in Birmingham. Uh, the exhaust work was done by Mad DP. Check him out on uh, Instagram. A really good exhaust fabricator. And the bodywork resprayed uh, by uh, spraying specialists in Luton. Really good job. They basically black everything out. I've gone. I've removed all the carbon and just gone back to factory black. The only carbon I've got is the wing mirrors, the roof and the rear spoiler. Other than that, I've just got rid of all of the carbon. Uh, oh, I see, there's some carbon on the tips also, you can't see it very well, but yeah. Come in, let me show you the uh, kit, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna install it. It can be a bit of a long install, lots of soldering required, but I'll show you the easiest way around it. Follow me. Right, we're inside now. Uh, these, are, these are the flash, flashing red and blue lights that I got. Um, if you want to find them on eBay, it's called LED flashlight. They're probably the cheapest. I think they cost me like 18 quid or something along those lines. So um, this is what they look like very quickly. So it comes with this box here, which controls the flashing. Um, and it comes with one, two, three, four, five. It comes with six flashing lights. Now, um, three of them are blue and three of them are red. You can go for different colours if you want. There's, there's other colours you can get. But what I've done is I'm not going to actually use these. Um, as I said, it only costs something like 18 quid or something like that. And the thing is, what I've noticed is over time, these uh, start rusting and it gets water goes inside them. And uh, yeah, it gets ruined quite quickly. So what I've done is, uh, I've got these. There's loads here, obviously I'm not going to use all of them. These are all weather LED lights. Now there's blue ones down here, there's red, red ones up here. This is what they look like. So they all join together, I'm going to chop them. These were supplied to me by Mark Signs. They use them in all of their signage, outdoor signage, and it lasts, lasts forever basically. And it's uh, fully waterproof, really good quality. Right, anyway, so I'm going to use these instead of these, so I'll show you how I, how I sit here. It's not hard. The only problem is they're white. So what I am going to do is I'm going to spray them with black tin spray. Um, so the light still start, shines through, but uh, they'll, they'll be black, so you won't be able to notice them in the grill. I also ordered this siren off of eBay. Um, it is... This is what it looks like. So it's a three-tone uh, speaker. It's got the police sound and everything. It's uh, it's quite big. I've tested the smaller one, and it's it's okay. It's loud, but this one is uh, meant to be almost twice as loud. Uh, again, it's just a 12 watt siren. You just plug it straight up to the battery. And this here is what controls the siren. So there's horn, siren, and so on. Um, Plug it in and I'll show you how it works. I'll do a bench test for you now just to show you how loud everything is and just to show you that everything works before we plug it into the car. So give me a minute, let me get the uh, test out. Right, so a quick bench test for you. I've got 12 volts here. Um, I'm gonna plug the siren onto the 12 volts. Uh, obviously this end goes into the speaker. Well, uh, everything works. 
Starbucks isn't shit. Let's uh, test the LEDs. What I've done is um, I have plugged on some of these LEDs. I haven't soldered them yet. I just want to see how well it works. Um, I'm going to put my colour on power source onto it. That's that. Start taking the car apart and um, see where, where I'm going to take my 12 volt source from and how I'm going to run my wiring through the car. So I'll leave that here, we'll go to the car and we'll start taking things apart. The first thing is I need to figure out how I'm going to take my wires from inside the cockpit of the car into the uh, engine bay. So I'm going to take off some of these uh, panels, put some uh, rods straight up and see if I can figure out which way it comes out. So yeah, uh, let's go. That was really quite easy, there's two 10mm bolts, then it just drops this section here. I can see some wires going through the loop. Looks like it's going into the engine bay. So uh, I've got this uh, rod here. And, uh, it's quite it's flexible, so let's see if I can get into the engine bay. I'm into the engine back and feel it. It's going in there. I can hear it over there. Now I've just got to find it. Let's go around to the front. Okay, so that was really quite easy actually. I don't know if you can see that blue rod there. So that's the way the cables would follow. It comes out from a little hole down there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's zoom in a little bit. See that that goes straight into the cockpit of the car. It's quite easy really. Right, I got lucky there. And um, yeah, now let's start feeding the cables. Right, so I know which way I'm gonna take the cables in now. I need to figure out where I'm gonna take my 12 volt from. So I'm gonna take this piece off here and um, see which, which way I'm gonna run my 10 volt 12 volts. from just, just in there two nuts that is uh, 12 volts coming from there Let's zoom in a bit that's where I'm gonna get my 12 volts from I'm gonna feed a wire there and bring it back up and then I can close there's a flap there uh, a flap there that flap closes again keep the install as neat as I can. This is the cable that came with the actual kit. I'm going to take this apart and what I'm going to do is I will I'm going to use only four of these strands. I'm going to put it inside this braiding uh, just to keep it really neat. So when it runs to the engine bay it doesn't actually look like this. It just sort of looks factory. Run two pieces of cable to one braiding, run another two into another braiding, and then I'm going to run the power cable to its own braiding. It's going to be quite easy to do, so I'm just going to chop the ends off. I'm going to solder everything you see, I'm not going to use uh, clips. I'm only going to 
clip the box. I'm only going to clip the box into the car because uh, I want to be able to remove the box. Time consuming, it's boring, but it makes the install look really neat. Right, so I've braided all my cables. This is the power cable braided, and there's the two uh, like uh, cables that are going to be taking the uh, signal to the LEDs. Um, the reason why the power cable is quite short is because this cable is going to be running the power for both the siren and the LEDs. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put. literally push it in instead of taking the, um, uh, the whole nut off I can literally unscrew the nut a little bit and just put it in probably the best way okay, what I figured out was uh, that obviously that nut down there was um, the one that I showed you earlier uh, was my live um, and then this is my ground um, I put a multimeter on it and I, think, and I found that this gives off 13.5 volts approximately um, Dead, so I can't show you. Right now, I'm going to do this. Um, I need to feed these. I need to feed these cables. Obviously, they're going to carry the signal to LEDs. I need to feed them straight into the cockpit. I need to feed some power straight into the cockpit. I need to feed the power or the receiver cable, uh, wire for the uh, siren into the cockpit as well. I knew that what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to put the siren in here as well as the LEDs. So, um, give me a minute. I need some T30s and some T25. To get these off, get the kidneys, kidney grins out, and then we'll go from there. I'm going to clean this area and I'm going to start 
start placing where I want my edges. So, um, the siren is going to go right at the front of the car and the power cable is not long enough to get to the power. So I'm going to extend the power cable and uh, this here obviously carries the sound um, from the mic. Um, what I've done is chop the end off and I've lost the ink. Uh -oh. I'll find it later. Yeah, I've chopped the end off. I'm going to have to extend this as well. This is not long enough to get into the car. So there is four wires that come out of this. Uh, yellow, green, red and black. So I'm going to have to extend this with four. But anyway, I'm going to extend it. I'm going to solder it. And then I'm going to braid them just like the others. So it looks very factory if anybody does notice it. Um, this is how I solder. Um, obviously everyone's got different techniques this is how I solder so what I, I do is obviously take two, the two ends off instead of putting it like that and uh, twisting it what a lot of people do you should really what you should do is cross it over cross it like this and then, then what you do is cross and twist what happens is Is, uh, it just makes one sort of long sort of line, you see, and then I'm going to solder that. And what I've done is I've already popped in the the, the um, heat shrink sleeve. Keep that away because you don't want to get that. Let that heat, you don't want that to heat up when you're soldering. Otherwise, it will just shrink into place before you know, on top of your solder. Right. So again, same thing. Cross and then twist. Right. Now I'm ready to solo. basically going to pull three of these I'm going to put inside uh, the braiding. What I've done is, you can see there's three cables here now, so these basically, there's a, the, a, the rubber seal is going to is going to cover all of this section anyway so you're never going to see this. These go down through there and one comes out of here, there's, there's already a little hole here in the rubber. The others go underneath this bit here. Anyway, this one here is the one that's connected to the siren. The siren is back here. The siren is back here. Um, if you can see it there, um, I'll, I'll put that down in a minute. There's the other two. So these are going to be connected to the LED. These, so, so, so these two, as well as the siren wire, come all the way here. This, the, uh, uh, this obviously carrying the LED current, as well as the siren wire and the power wire for the siren. They all feed straight, uh, not there. They all feed under there, up through there, underneath. 
this bit of rubber here and then to here. So we've got the power wire here. This is going to be for the siren. And then the, the remainder of it goes to the mic, which is going to go into the cockpit. These two are for the LEDs. So these are going to go to the LED controller uh, module or controller box, whatever you want to call it. These are going to go into the cockpit as well. And then I've got another wire here. This is the power wire for the actual um, LEDs. So the LED controller box. So I need to put these. I need to put these four straight into the cockpit. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to tape it to the end of this, and then hopefully just pull it through. Hopefully it should go through. There's a lot of wire, so I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't get stuck. Let's see what happens. done is um, <clears throat> I've uh, got everything ready to solder now so I've, I've put uh, I put plugs on everything because the reason I've, I've, I'm using plugs is because I want to be able to remove the control at any point so if for example I get pulled over by the police saying that you've got um, you know flashing red and blue lights in your car I can the main thing is the controller won't be connected if the controller is not connected you can get away with having them on your car as long as you're not using them but if you've got the capability of using them on the road then you can get into trouble for it but uh, the main thing is I'm only gonna have uh, connect the controller when I go to a show and I'm gonna take it out when I'm not at a show so on the roads there's no way of me using the flashing red and blue lights because the controller won't be connected and won't be in the car Right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, solder everything up. So this is power for both the LEDs as well as the uh, uh, siren. So I soldered, just got to put the heat shrinks back on. <coughs> I have uh, put the soldered everything. I've taped anything up that I needed to. I put the shrink crap on. I put the uh, 12 volt, I've connected the 12 volt up, I'll show you now. Um, what I'm going to do now is give it a quick test, see if they all work. If it works, we're good to go. But yeah, let me just quickly show you. So, oops, I've put the 12 volt, I've put the ground on, 12 volt is on down there, I've closed that up, I've just got, I've got to put the cover back on there. Um, take that out in case I forget. So I've not put these on down yet, I've not stuck them down. To be honest with you, I'm going to have to, after I stick them down, I'm going to have to put some, uh, uh, make them black. Otherwise you'll be able to see it behind there. But anyway, let's uh, plug the, let's plug the controller, uh, controllers in and uh, 
Let's see what happens. Right, okay. Power. working now just sorted out the loose connections what I'm going to do now is get them all stuck down and sort the car back out okay, so I'm happy everything works I'm just going to give it a quick clean and stick the LEDs down Uh, it's all working. Let's go outside and see what it looks like. 